What if I told you that once upon a time, there was a rivalry in the 80s even bigger than Celtics versus Lakers and even more intense than Celtics versus Pistons? I bet you wouldn't believe me. But for three years in a row, the Eastern Conference Finals was a dogfight between the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers. Long before Celtics Lakers, it was Celtics Sixers. One of the most intense rivalries ever, as you see Mark Ivoroni and Larry Bird go at it this game. Larry actually he's going to be thrown out and he decided he's going to get his licks in before he left. I think in terms of uh, two clubs and professional sports and professional uh, team sports, uh, really wanting one another and going after one another's throats, this is definitely the ultimate. There's Dr. J trying to hold Bird. Bird retaliates, and uh, oh, there oh, is yeah. and look at Jay it. Oh. hitting Bird as he's being held from behind by Barkley and Moses Malone. There's no greater time in basketball that I've ever had other than going out and beating the 76ers. And in the 1981 Eastern Conference Finals, they had a battle for the ages in what many experts have called the greatest playoff series of all time. It was the, the greatest series I've ever played in, and in my opinion, maybe the greatest series leading up to a championship that two teams ever had to play. Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics were facing the MVP of the league, Dr. J, and the Philadelphia 76ers, the team with the best record in the league. And to make matters worse, Boston had not won a single game in Philadelphia in almost three years because the 76ers were stacked with a team full of Hall of Famers. Well, you start out with the Hall of Famers they had over there. Start out with Dr. J, Bobby Jones. Maurice Cheeks was the starting guard, became a Hall of Famer. Caldwell Jones, the Boston Strangler, Andrew Toney, Daryl Dawkins. Daryl Dawkins was like Shaq, you know, just strong and big. And they were coached well by Billy Cunningham. That's why they were so tough. Just one year earlier, a rookie Larry Bird led the Boston Celtics to the greatest single season turnaround in NBA history. One man took the second worst team in the league from 29 wins to a 62 win championship contender overnight. Unfortunately, the Celtics lost in the conference finals to this same Philadelphia 76ers team, sparking a rivalry that would have them battling for Eastern Conference supremacy for the next six years. And the following season, it was looking like deja vu all over again. So in 81, we win the first game up in Boston. Then you guys come back and you know win game two. Irving putting the moves on McHale. Yeah, we play a really tight game down there in Philly, and we lose. Philadelphia has been magnificent, and that game is over. We lose game four, and I'm like, ooh, this isn't good. Six seconds to go. Boston doesn't call time. Archibald intercepted by Bobby Jones, and the game is over. It's a tight one possession game, and Bobby Jones does what he does, makes a great defensive play. That allowed you guys to win game four and go up 3-1. The dreaded 3-1 deficit. In the history of the entire NBA, teams that go up 3-1 in a best of seven series are 258 and 13. That's a winning percentage of 95.2%. So the chances of Larry Bird and the Celtics coming back to win this series was at 4.8%. And for teams that go down 3-1 to one and win the championship, their chances drop down to 1.5%. So at this point, to say that Larry Bird was an underdog is an understatement. I wasn't the type of guy to take stuff for granted. 3-1, I mean, it felt good, but it was by no means a foregone conclusion. A desperate situation for the Celtics. Game number five of this Eastern Conference Finals. The Celtics must win three straight. In game five, the Celtics were losing by 10 points with only six minutes left in the game. And with the season on the line, Larry Bird took matters into his own hands. Larry going to work offensively. This clutch bucket 
was the last field goal of the game. Some defensive stops and a couple free throws later, the Celtics won game five by only two points. All right, here it is. One second. Boston up by two. Trying to go to Philly for game six. in the final crucial moments and did it when he had to do it. And going in Boston, losing the next game, you know, you had one to play with, but, you know, coming into Philly, it's like, man, you have to feel good coming home. Coming down to your place, I remember this is it. I mean, you know, game six, we're going back to Philly. Oh, it doesn't take long to cop this rivalry. I think it's one of the best rivalries in sports, you know. If you go out there and you compete and, uh, you know, you got to play so well to win. It, you know, you just, it just demands a lot out of you. And uh, when the series is over, I think both teams can look back and say, hey, we gave it our best shot. They know that they haven't won in 10 tries here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And that's why they want to go back to Boston winning this afternoon. We got into a dogfight. Back and forth. Back and forth, exactly. Back and forth. The Celtics trying to break their cheeks here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. They need to do it to force game seven. By the second half of game six, the Celtics were losing by as much as 17 points. But more Larry Bird heroics turned this game into one of the greatest playoff games in NBA history. Because Boston stormed back and were willing to fight anyone that stepped in their way. Even if you were just a fan in the crowd. Harris with a turnaround in the lane. No good. I got knocked into the crowd. And when I got knocked into the crowd, some guy like was saying something to me like, get back in the damn game. So I jumped over the photographer and then it registered in my mind what he had said. As soon as he said that, I re-jumped back over and went into the stands with a flying forearm. At that time, it galvanized all our players together. It could have been all these people against us and we were gonna go down together. And at that particular point, the great Dave Zinkoff, who is the public address announcer for Philadelphia, comes on where we're down by 17 and says to the crowd, tickets go on sale for the championship game right after this. Oh, my God. Everybody. Everybody looked at each other and went, are you kidding me? This guy already said that. And then it was, it was on like popcorn then. We were down 17, almost before half. By the time we had our foot square in there behind after they were doing the celebration, we were down by only five points. Tiny tries to drive. Bird, rebound, basket good, and a foul. Like a Mikhail Bird, Maxwell, ML Carr, and Archibald looping shot by Larry Bird. 23 points for Larry Bird, and the Celtics lead 84-83. As Larry Bird leads the comeback with 25 points, 16 rebounds, and 4 assists, he once again hits the last clutch bucket of the game. Bird out to Tiny with 8 seconds on the shot clock. Bobby Jones is on him on a defensive switch. Hollins on Bird. Larry Bird's shot. Props for him. Look at that shot. This shot put the Celtics up by 3 points. One defensive stop and a pair of free throws later helps Boston finally win a game in Philadelphia. Something they hadn't done in nearly three years. Dawkins and Caldwell Jones, and that'll do it. The game is over. Boston has won. Only three teams have come back from a 3-1 deficit to force a seventh and win a seventh game. And the first time in 12 games, the Boston Celtics have defeated the Philadelphia 76ers. And after that game, Kevin McHale called what happened next his most favorite moment of his entire career. Kevin McHale, what is your favorite NBA moment? Ooh. Uh, I would say 81, game six, we were in Philly, and we were uh, down 3-1, and we won game five in Boston to go 3-2, and we beat them on a last-second play where Tony's driving in, and we get a block, got a block, got my hand on the ball, and we win the game, and um, 
go back to Boston and there's people like there's the, the like I didn't realize that because I'm, I'm new to Boston. It's my first year being out there. I come from northern Minnesota, small mining town, played at the University of Minnesota. I didn't realize that Boston and Philadelphia hated each other sports wise. <laughs> I mean, hated each other. So we get back that night and there, the, the, there's people. There, the, there's a crowd. I mean, there, there's people at the airport. And this is game, we haven't won anything. We still have game seven to go. And they were, so, I, I, the whole city was like electric. And then game seven in the, in the arena, when I walked in, I got chills because the people were all standing up cheering. 18 minutes before the game, we went out to warm up. There wasn't an empty seat. And they stood the whole game yeah. and cheered and yelled and screamed. No dancing girls, no nothing. <laughs> and Oregon going, uh, 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 uh. And it was the most unbelievable environment you've ever seen. The building shook. I was at that game. I was at all those games. And sure. game seven, to this day, is the best basketball game I've ever been to. That was the only game I've been to, I've written about this, where the refs were just like, guys, you settle this. Were, <laughs> guys are on the floor every play. There's three guys getting knocked down. It was like a rugby match. And... uh and it, I've just never seen a game like that. I don't think that game would happen again. There would have been about 20 flagrant fouls. <laughs> <laughs> the Philadelphia 76ers, they have to be wondering about the fact that they had the Celtics put away. And all the Celtics wanted to do was win one at a time. Red Auerbeck told me before the game, Kevin, it's not so much saying you've got to win three games, but to tell your team they have to beat us one more time. That was the championship game. Whoever won that series between Philly and Boston, and Philly being up 3-1, and you getting them back to Boston for game seven, whoever won that particular night, we knew that either one of those teams, Philly or Boston, could beat Houston. So that was the championship game that particular night. Chris Ford, this is from the corner. Larry Bird, the rebound. That's what Boston has done to Philadelphia, dominate the offensive board. Harris, Going to Dawkins, what he did to him, but misses. But Larry Bird, another offensive rebound. And the next time. Tiny to Ford. Larry Bird, three-point play. If anything could ignite a crowd and ignite a team, a three-point play by their best player, it's the safest way to do it. And just like the previous four games, Game 7 went down to the wire. And with a tie game, with one minute left on the clock, Larry Bird does what Larry Bird did the entire series in the clutch. Irving, setting up for something, fakes, low into Dawkins, double team, Dawkins goes in, misses, here comes Bird out of the pack. Bird coming to the left, stop and pop, off the glass, it's gone! Off the lead, 91-89, one second left, and the pass. This game-winning jump shot helped Larry Bird versus a team with three Hall of Famers on their roster pull off the greatest 3-1 comeback of all time. Because the 1981 Eastern Conference Finals remains the only series in NBA history in which five games were decided by two points or less. The Celtics won Game 5 by two points, Game 6 by two points, and Game 7 by one point. Each game literally went down to the last second. Now that is the definition of clutch. It's because we did win a lot of one, two point games. It just seemed like every time you look up the clock, we had a one point lead and there's one second on the clock and they had the ball. It was them type of games where all the emotion, all the adrenaline and everybody was just flowing and everything was just going to perfection at the end of the game. That was probably the best games I ever played in my life. It was a seven game series and every one of them was just full of excitement. Only four teams in the history of the NBA have ever come back from down 3-1 in a series and went on to win the championship. Bill Russell's Boston Celtics in 1968, Akeem Olajuwon's Houston Rockets in 1995, LeBron James' Cleveland Cavaliers in 2016, and Larry Bird's Boston Celtics in 1981. Yes, Larry Bird, in only his second NBA season, won his first championship that year. So if anybody ever tries to convince you that a great player couldn't win a title in his first five years because he was too young or didn't have enough help, 
tell him that Larry Bird took the second worst team in the league to an NBA title in only two years. No excuses.